everyone. My name is Karina Angel from Red Hat and welcome to All Things Data. Today we have a very special guest speaker for our second episode of All Things Data. We have Siggy Volkoff from Red Hat who is here to give a live demo of workload resilience on OpenShift with Ceph storage, updating and adding storage to your persistent volumes and everything just keeps running. Thank you, Sigi, please take it away. Hi, my name is Sigi Volkov. I'm a storage performance instigator. Today's demo will be workload consistency during Ceph upgrade and storage expansion. This uh, demo is uh, based on components of the OpenShift Container Storage version 4.2. So OpenShift uh, Container Storage 4 um, is based on um, the OCS operator and the Rook operator, and the Rook operator is the director or orchestrator of all things Ceph related. The reason this, this demo is actually using uh, Rook and Ceph and not uh, OCS4 is because OCS4 is um, very closed and very opinion, opinionated about what versions uh, we can run and how uh, and to what versions we can uh, update. And so it's just very easy to perform the demo on, uh, on Rook and Ceph as opposed to doing on a, a OCS4. But the, uh, the method of the update of software or storage expansion in OCS4 are, is completely identical. In this demo, what I will uh, show is I'm going to have a MySQL pod. Uh, so I'm going to preload with some uh, data. And I'm going to have a small job that is going to run another pod, a sysbench pod, that will stress the MySQL pod. We're going to show, I'm going to show many uh, terminal windows. We're going to monitor the transaction per second of the sysbench uh, job. And during this process, we are going to uh, update the Ceph version uh, by changing basically the, uh, the Ceph uh, CRD. And um, uh, we're going to monitor to see if there's any changes uh, during the, uh, the update. And, uh, and then we're going to add storage or expand the storage uh, that the Ceph cluster have. And again, monitor to see are we seeing any kind of uh, um, IO performance uh, hiccups or anything like that uh, during the, this stage. Uh, this is a, a completely a live demo on an AWS uh, cluster, uh, consists of uh, one master and uh, three worker nodes. So. Um, we also have to cross our fingers and pray to the gods of AWS. And I will uh, now uh, start with the demo. And the version that I'm going to update to is 14.2.6. Um, before starting uh, this, I'll just uh, share a few other windows in here. On the um, top uh, uh, left, is a list of uh, pods that Ceph is currently running. Um, on the bottom left is the components uh, of uh, that Ceph needs in, in, in order to run and support the RBD or block devices uh, options. Uh, as you can see, all of them are with version 14.2.5. On the top right is the Rook operator uh, log. We're just uh, constantly tailing it. On the bottom right is uh, our transactions uh, per seconds that are, are running on the uh, MySQL. Um, and I will just uh, uh, run this uh, uh, patch uh, script in the middle uh, uh, window um, and it will uh, start the process. What we will see immediately is that the Rook operator uh, will uh, uh, get the request to change the version and uh, uh, and act upon it. Now, of course, all of these uh, uh, manual things that uh, I'm showing in here are not going to be needed on uh, OpenShift Container Storage or OCS4. In OCS4, you, will, uh, you, uh, you are able to choose 
uh, whether you want to automatic update the, the OCS software or manually update it and the uh, OCS4 uh, operator uh, will basically take care of all, everything manually that uh, I've done here such as patching uh, the Rook operator uh, uh, and things like that. Um, so on the uh, top of the left side what we're seeing is that the, the first uh, Mon uh, uh, was just uh, uh, chosen, Mon A was chosen as the first one to be restarted and deployed with the, uh, the new software and um, we can see that it's also on the uh, bottom left it's the only one that is currently uh, available with the new version already with 14.2.6 14 .2 uh, the way uh, this uh, process of update is uh, working um, is it will go through the three uh, mon uh, pods that we have Every time it will update the MON, it will allow it to be back into the uh, MON quorum and, and will not continue to the next one before it's uh, actually working. The wait time is um, roughly, if the wait time is not roughly, is exactly 60 seconds. If, we, if the Rook operator decides that the MON is not back in the quorum, it will just pause for 60 seconds and uh, uh, start uh, again on uh, the next time. Uh, so we see that uh, uh, the Rook operator decided to move into the uh, next one and we can see it being initialized. And on the bottom right we can also see that there is um, uh, enumeration for basically the required whether it's updated and whether it's available. These are the two different uh, uh, values uh, in here and they are uh, basically how Rook decides again or uh, uh, whether to move into the next phase or not. Um, one note about the pods that we have in here, uh, this uh, uh, Rook Ceph cluster only runs the uh, RBD portion of Ceph, the uh, uh, block, op uh, block device option of Ceph. You're, gonna, you're going to see a lot more um, um, pods with other components of Ceph, uh, for example, uh, 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 the gateway and uh, for the objects and, and uh, CephFS uh, that are again are going to be updated in a fashion where uh, uh, only one, uh, once a certain object is uh, completed the update, uh, the Rook operator will continue to the, uh, the next one. And we are uh, now going to, uh, uh, the Rook operator is now going to update the third uh, monitor uh, pod, the third uh, mon, as you can see on the bottom uh, left. It's waiting for it to uh, be updated and then it will be, uh, wait for it to be uh, available. The next uh, component that is going to be uh, updated is the uh, manager pod. There's only a single uh, pod of this. Um, and once the mon C is basically back into quorum, it will continue into the updating of the uh, manager pod. Now, one of the questions uh, in the presentation that I uh, kind of uh, propose whether uh, do we should we see any kind of IO uh, disturbance or IO pose, as I call it, uh, while running these uh, uh, updates. Um, and, and the answer is uh, that typically uh, uh, we should not. Uh, most software-defined storage uh, uh, that are available, you can update them. Uh, uh, you can use update. You can update the software uh, live. Um, however, most places will probably like to create some kind of a time frame where there will not be any kind of uh, live IOs going into the storage uh, system uh, for this duration. Um, but in this demo, we're actually updating uh, the software while IOs are being running from uh, th to the MySQL uh, pod. Now we have three OSDs. These are basically the pods that are providing storage or creating the self cluster to uh, uh, for our um, uh, 
for any application on this uh, 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 OpenShift uh, cluster to, to be used. And we can see that uh, the first one was already updated, OSD uh, 0. The second one is being updated uh, right now. And if you look at the, the, uh, the bottom right, you can see that the IOPS are a little bit uh, dropping. And that is because uh, at this point, Ceph uh, has to basically uh, tell the Ceph clients, hey, do not use this copy of the data because we are now uh, changing it. Use this copy of the data uh, we, we, because it's valid and it's already with the new Ceph uh, version. So OSD1 is uh, or, uh, also uh, updated and a, 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 um, the Rook operator will soon move into updating uh, OSD2. And uh, uh, by the way, there's a pod here called uh, Ceph Tools. Can uh, disregard this. That's um, kind of a, 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 a a Rook uh, a self management uh, pod. Um, um, OCS does not uh, use uh, this pod. Uh, so again, the cycle of sixty seconds is going to be uh, is going to be uh, enforced by uh, the Rook operator if it does not uh, think that uh, uh, all the OSDs are up and running. And now we are seeing that after the 60 seconds, OSD2 is being terminated. And we can see on the bottom right how the availability, uh, the require is for one pod. One pod has already been updated. It is not yet available at the uh, Ceph cluster. Um, and we can see also that once this OSD will be uh, uh, updated and uh, back in the quorum, the log of the Rook Ceph of the Rook operator is going to show succeeded updating the cluster. My little script here said it took about six minutes and fifty seven seconds to update. We saw a small uh, uh, blip with IOs uh, being a little bit uh, uh, reduced into the MySQL uh, pod, and uh, everything else uh, continues as is. So I'm going to continue the demo now with uh, how we are adding additional storage into the Ceph cluster using Rook. And again, all of this will be done uh, from the OpenShift console in OpenShift uh, storage uh, uh, container in OCS4. Um, what we have, this is a, a, an AWS cluster, as I previously uh, stated, on the, on the um, Top left, I have a watch that basically is looking at all the OSD pods. Again, the OSD pods are, or the OSD process, uh, is what uh, consume storage and, uh, and create out of all the storage a SF cluster and then provide it back uh, for other applications uh, to use. Um, on the bottom uh, left, we have a watch that is a running a Ceph a OSD tree command. As we can see, we have three hosts, and each of them has a single a OSD running on it. Um, on our uh, top uh, right is the same a, a Rook operator log, and our on the bottom right is the, our transactions that are continuing uh, to be uh, running. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, edit the Ceph cluster uh, component, uh, Ceph cluster object, and as you can see in here, uh, when I installed everything, I actually filtered what devices uh, to, uh, uh, to be used, and I specifically also uh, specified to not use all the devices on, uh, on, on the AWS uh, VM. So I'm going to change that to true, and I'm going to change this to uh, null and uh, save the object. And we're going to go and see on the, on the top right, immediately the Rook operator is identified that as a change to the self cluster object. And it's going to uh, initiate a, a search basically of, uh, a, on each of our uh, VMs, whether there are new devices 
that uh, uh, can be used. And now as we can see, the OSD prepare pods on the top left are all being restarted. OSD prepare pods have a, a one a task, and that is to prepare a host uh, or a VM to be used for uh, for Ceph. And so they are they uh, they have a specific job. They basically go over all the devices that are available to be used on that host, and then provide back the information into the rook operator and once the rook operator decides that if there are any new devices to be used it will uh, uh, create new osds by them that's why you see that some of these osds pods have already completed some of them are still running and what you can see is that uh, uh, on the uh, bottom left the osd tree have already marked three of a, a OSDs that it can be used because we just provided more storage devices to the Ceph, a, a Ceph cluster. Um, they are still uh, just something to be used. It's not really uh, usable yet because uh, uh, there is no OSD pod specific to uh, that is running and using this uh, 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 the device that the VM is uh, providing. What we're, and now we're seeing on the bottom, uh, on the top uh, left, how uh, OSD uh, pods for OSD 3, 4, and 5 are being uh, uh, initialized. And once they are being, uh, the pod will be up and running on the bottom left, uh, we are seeing how each of these uh, uh, new OSDs are basically joined into their existing uh, host are marked as uh, up and are uh, available uh, to be used by uh, uh, by any uh, application that is using uh, the, um, the Rook and Ceph uh, block option. Uh, as we can see on the uh, bottom uh, right, there's a, a little bit of a slowdown in the um, in the IOs. Um, uh, to try to explain, it's very simple. We had uh, three devices that provided the storage for everything, and we had some data on it. Now we have six devices that are providing storage for everything. Basically, Ceph is going to take the existing data layer that we have and will uh, uh, spread it over uh, uh, all the devices. This is actually the the, the, the biggest strength of uh, 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 one of the biggest strengths of uh, Ceph, uh, it's uh, uh, the, uh, massively distributed. The more devices uh, Ceph has, the better the, the performance is. And so Ceph as a cluster is now redistributing uh, the data. Of course, all the data is available uh, all the time. And we just uh, finished basically adding the storage to, uh, um, to our three available VMs in uh, AWS. And this is uh, the end of the demo. Thank you so much, Sigi. That was excellent. And thank you everybody for joining us for another All Things Data session on OpenShift Commons on the briefing channel. Now, all of these are posted to YouTube, and please look at the openshift.com slash storage page, as well as view the All Things Data OpenShift Commons YouTube channel, where this will be posted. So please look out for this on the OpenShift blog. Thank you, everybody. See you next time.